Hello, hello. I think we're live. I think I think things are going, but there's always that moment when we're switching over from the great voids, the digital void, into the live stream space. So hopefully we've made that transition. Fingers crossed. Um, let me just go confirm a few things. You know, I like to. I like to just check in and make certain that all the technology is talking to each other because we've had sufficient adventures with technology not doing that thing. So, hello everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining me tonight for our hand sewing tutorial. Hello, Charity. Hello, Brittany. Hello, Robin. Hello, Selena. Uh, thank you, Charity, for letting me know the video and the sounds are good. That is a relief. Um, it's always a bit of a, you know, <laughs> uh, hope uh, that uh, everything is working on my end. Hello, David. Um, hello, Chris. Well, you know, sewing always has a bit of a uh, cheeky streak to it. Hello, Lady June Squirrel. Hello, Alicia. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. It's Tuesday, which means tiaras, of course. Thank you. This is the January tiara, and I'm going to wear the dickens out of it all month, I think. Well, you know, maybe not quite every day. It does tend to snag on some things, but, but regularly. Good evening, Ricky. Thank you so much for joining. It's so good to have you here. I'm so happy. Hello, Leticia. Thank you very much. The January tiara. Hello, Ivy. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. I hope you have your tea. I have my tea. Little Freddie Mercury, too. Mm. He's my favorite for tutorial days. Um, good evening, Fairy Godmother. Thank you so much. Lady June Squire, I feel very elegant, actually. Hello, Joanne. Wonderful. All right. So I think, um, you know, we might have a few people coming in still. Hello, Angela. Hello, hello. Wonderful. Oh, Robin. Yay. Um, let's see. Charity's ordered a couple of tiaras. Excellent. Oh, my goodness. Alicia's planning a Russian style tiara. Oh, you know, we have plenty of time for tiaras. We have 12 months of tiaras in the year of the tassel. We have so much time for all of the shenanigans. Hello, Martha. Hello. Let's see here. I'm just scrolling up a bit. Um, so Charity's going to, is looking for one with hot pink gems on it. So keep your eye out. Hello, 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 everyone. Oh, let's see, Robin hosted a nice thing. Um, she's found which Scottish clan her husband is descended from. Oh, that's fantastic. Ooh, and found the family tartan. Lovely. Um, we won't tell anyone. Your secret is safe here. Mostly safe. I don't think your husband usually watches Robin, fortunately. Hello, Marlena. Hello. Um, Oh, Ivy's going to do a glow in the dark tiara. That seems really good, actually. Um, and uh, David is wearing a lounge hat with a tassel. Perfect, perfect, wonderful. Oh, so very good. Well, tonight we will probably talk about tiaras and tassels and all the things as our hands will be doing um, a lot of the work. Um, Letitia says a lounge hat with tassel would be a fun sewing project. Yes. And who knows, perhaps it will be one of our shorter little projects that we do uh, one of these weeks in between bigger things. And um, they're not too hard to make and they're really fun. So, um, ooh. Robin says the family tartan is a good tartan. The main colors are red and green. The hunting tartan is dark blue and green. That sounds really lovely, actually. Right, so um, we are going to be doing a more complicated hat sew along after the dirndl. So we will do some like 
uh, buckram focus tap making, but I also like the soft tats, the little bits, you know, the quilted tats, the sort of faster hats that you can do mostly on your machine, or again by hand in a very similar fashion to what we're doing tonight. Oh, ah, that's lovely. Alicia says she's adopted so she can do whatever she wants. Yes, that's true. Uh, but she's planning a riding outfit with her husband starting because she can't decide on one. That sounds really nice. Um, oh, good. All right, and we and we have some interest in making tiaras. We'll see what happens with that. I am going to talk to some teachers and see if I can arrange something. Right, so, but let's talk about our project tonight. And I know I saw from a number of you that you've prepped your fabric, that you're ready to go. Tonight we are making what's called a bicornu, which is, it means bicorn, by horn, two horns, um, pin cushion, which is a really fun uh, style of pin cushion. Now, these are made by setting two squares against each other, but offset like so. And I'm going to talk you through how to set everything up and how to stitch it. We're going to make ours entirely by hand today. Um, the other thing about this type of pincushion is frequently the entire thing is embroidered. So both pieces are heavily embroidered. Uh, people who love to do embroidery and needle crafts of that variety use this style of pin, pin cushion to show off their needlework, which is lovely. But sometimes you don't want to spend a year embroidering a pin cushion. I don't. And so you can still get the same lovely effect of the shape without embroidery, just using some fun fabrics. And um, I don't know about you, but I always have little scraps left over from projects that are anywhere from five to seven inches square so it's easy enough to find a square of something beautiful to make into a, a pin cushion but more to the point after making lots of mass out of printed cotton fabrics i have lots and lots of little squares left over from that and um, so i'm using this one Lovely fabric that is marionettes, they of the dead marionettes. Um, I have a second one cut out and prepared to go, depending. I made two in case I make an error tonight whilst I'm demoing for you. And so the second one is uh, sugar skulls, but Star Wars sugar skulls. So clearly a theme. Oh, thank you, Lindsay. Happy New Year to you as well. Um, oh, and uh, Alicia says, if I have a, if I have, or one has a certain pattern in mind, she could embroider it. Thank you. That's lovely. Um, so my goodness. Oh, ah, <laughs> fairy godmother filtered her insomnia last night. We were looking at hat making supplies. That's something I do too, and I can't sleep. Um, Yes, any excuse for craft supplies, indeed. Oh, Cindy has ordered some millinery wire and um, has some buckram, excellent. Everything else you probably can find at home, uh, needles, threads, um, will go through all of the supplies for the hat making in advance, of course. Hello, Evie, it's good to see you, my darling. So I'm just making certain to catch up. Um, <laughs> so perhaps, very good mother, I will send you a packet of some of the nicer scraps of cottons for quilt making. Um, oh, and I agree that the the Zizix, how did we decide that you pronounce that word? A clan needs an outrageous tartan. It's true, it's true. Um, ooh, and June, Lady June Squirrel can use her Tula Pink machine to embroider like crazy. So you can still do the embroidered squares for doing your um, Bikonu uh, pin cushions. So I am going to beg your patience. If you are following me in a few venues, you know that I have been feeling very under the weather. 
So if I'm a little bit more scattershot than normal, or if I seem like I'm pausing more often or moving a little bit more slowly, it is because uh, my back is in complete revolt. So, right. Mm. Anyway, so first step, first step of starting out with your B cornu is to find the middle of one side and then to pin one point of the other side to that middle point. So. <laughs> yes, Janet, you're correct. You know you're an amateur hat maker when buying two yards of buckram is a good idea. Absolutely true. Um, yeah, no, I'm a little bit dense, it's true. Oh my goodness, we've got some good conversation about um, embroidery, embroidery machines, that's wonderful. Right, so um, once you've found your middle point, you can use your handy dandy seam gauge, that's how I found mine. But if that's, if you don't have that around, really fold your fabric corner to corner and just pinch to the middle and then pin mark it. That works too. You don't have to be exact. Close enough is fine. Uh, the right side should be out, Brittany. Excellent question. So it should be wrong side to wrong side, right sides out. So you can see the raw edges are folded. We are going to, we're sewing it all together, right sides out. So that's why I had you press your seam allowances under. So wrong sides together, right sides out. You're making a sandwich. So find your halfway point. And then take the corner of one piece and holding them wrong sides together, line them up like so. Does that make sense now, Brittany? She's confirming that everyone's got that. It's very important because we're not turning this project. We're going to stitch it together by hand with an embroidery stitch. And then we will stuff it and finish stitching it close. Um, so Brittany and I think a few other people may have had trouble finding the embroidery floss. Please let me know in the comments if you could not find embroidery floss um, so I can give you an alternative means of attachment to the embroidery stitch we're going to do. Just going to take a moment. I think yellow. Don't, or do you think the pink? Yellow or pink? Oh, June, you can certainly machine it if you like, but I'm going to show everyone else how to do it by hand. Let me know if you think yellow or pink and uh, a very thin crochet thread will work. Absolutely, Joanne. Yeah, oh, everyone says yellow. All right, yellow it is. Very good, thank you. Um, <laughs> Charity, I'll do the second one in pink. So, all right. Yeah, now you just want your... Um, All right, lots of yellow. So we're going to do yellow. So let's see, Joanne, crochet thread. You just want a fairly narrow gauge of the crochet thread. Um, everyone else, you want your embroidery floss. Do about, you know, 18, 20 inches long. You don't want too long. You'll probably have to do two or three passes of threads. That's all right. 
Thank you, dear Lizzie. You are, um, I suspect I'm going to need to start talking to you about tiaras. All right, let's see here. Um, okay, so Brittany found a substitute, she thinks will work. Good, good, good. Um, uh, yes, fairy godmother, all of that, very important. To send sleep luck and wishes for insurance. 11 Pirates says yellow. Janet is in the pink camp. I might have to make another one with pink. Um, so, right, so then we, if you are using embroidery floss, you're going to go in here and you're going to pull apart two to three threads from your embroidery floss. So it usually comes in six strands and you're just going to pull it apart, slow and steady. Oh, we've got several pink camps. All right. If I were very, very cheeky, I would marry the two colors, but we're going to keep it very simple tonight. So once you have your floss, take your embroidery needle, which should be large. Let me see if I can show this to you, how large this needle is. It has a nice large eye on it, which is very important. For a number of reasons. One, I too, can no longer see as sharply as I once could. But also you'll find embroidery thread is thick. And so you want a nice large eye to put it through. Now, who has never embroidered before? That's very important. And perhaps the first question I should have asked, but I didn't. Um, so if you've embroidered before, let me rephrase that question. If you've never used embroidery stitches at all, ever, ever, and this is your very first time, please say so in the comments. Yes, all right. Very good, Mother. You should definitely build a pink point shoe pin cushion. Absolutely, that would be amazing. All right, Leticia's first time with embroidering, excellent. Ooh, all right, uh, Alicia is going to use some variegated thread, excellent, excellent. Not a problem, Leticia. Cindy, it's been a bit of a long time. All right, not a problem. I need to grab them, they're here. I just haven't grabbed them yet. Um, all right. Okay, so first things first, I've got some stuff called Thread Heaven. Um, it's not made anymore, but you might find uh, Thread Magic, which is very similar, or beeswax in your local um, sewing supply place, you know, whether it's Joann's or, or a local independent shop. Um, most needlepoint shops will have something like this or beeswax. And you really just want to draw your threads through this and try not to unthread your needle. Um, we're just getting the threads a little bit lubricated before we stitch. All right, good. So here's something I'm going to teach you the way I was taught to embroider which is just a way, not the perfect way, but it's the way I learned. So you're going to have a short tail of threads and then a long tail of thread. So not going to double it, all right? Ooh, oh, very nice. A local beekeeper, Alicia says, can get you beeswax on the cheek, usually. All right, so. You've got this sort of asymmetrical, short tail, long tail. The long tail is your working thread. So you want to keep track of what's happening with that. 
The short tail is to keep your thread from coming out of your needle. All right. Um, if it comes unthreaded, it's all right. You can thread it again. It's not a big deal. Now, when I was taught to embroider a very long time ago, my grandmama told me that the, the underside of your project, you should try and keep it as neat as possible. Now, when you're starting out, it's not always possible to keep it super neat, but do try again to keep track of this working thread because you're going to want to pull it all the way through every time. Sometimes it may get tangled, it's all right, it's not the end of the world, but just try and make a habit of practicing pulling the thread all the way through. Now, um, for those of you who are beginning, you may decide you want to put a little knot in the tail of your embroidery thread. I will tell you, as you get more advanced and do more and more embroidery, you will wish to not, um, not you'll stop putting that knot at the end. But just as a safety, as you're getting started and getting used to embroidery, just put a little knot in the end of that thread. All right. Oh my goodness, I love this. Uh, Charity says, find an apiary, find true love. It's a universal truth, that's lovely. Um, so uh, Fairy Godmother says, yay for beeswax, it is a must. That's why ballerinas often use dental floss to sew ribbons on our shoes. Yes, I remember doing that actually. Um, right, so now we are going to start by coming from underneath whatever you're considering your top fabric. So for me, it's really easy. I'm doing a print fabric and a plain fabric. It makes it easy for me to keep track and also demonstrate for you. So I'm going to just take my needle and I'm going to push it up through the points of my purple fabric, but I'm not catching this red fabric. Okay, I'm going to put all the way through until my knot hits the edge of that fabric and I cannot pull through any further. All right, now if you are more experienced with embroidery, then you should treat that end the way that you're comfortable treating it. All right, so now. We take a sip of tea. We're going to do what's essentially the blanket stitch. And that's a very common uh, embroidery stitch. It's used a lot. It's used for appliques. It's used for finishing off the edges of blankets. Absolutely. Um, and so we're going to use it to join these two edges of fabric. Now, that said, there are many, many. Oh, uh, well, yeah, no. Uh, so Ivy, as I said, there are lots of ways to learn and do. And as you get advanced, more advanced, and you're not just starting out, you don't put a knot at the end of that thread. But when I was a child and first learning how, it's a safety. And I don't want anyone to be frustrated today or feel like, they can't do this, that they're having too much trouble keeping their threads um, in place. It's more important that we have fun than that we're doing the perfect thing to start out with, right? So um, now I'm going to readjust the camera. So I hope that you'll be able to see a little bit better my stitches, fingers crossed, um, whilst we are doing the uh, sort of a little bit of an adjusted uh, blanket stitch. I just want to point out there are lots of different embroidery stitches you could use to finish these edges, to sew them together. And if you know how to embroider, you should do the one that you like to do for, for your finish. Um, the blanket stitch is really straightforward and it's a good one to learn, but there are lots of options. So a fly stitch would work, herringbone would work, 
the bunch of lovely options. Yeah, I start pulling from the back to the front. So the tail of the knot is hanging out of the wrong side of my top fabric. That is exactly what I did, Leticia. Perfect, you are following exactly right. So now let's adjust the camera. Oh, look, you can kind of see my workspace. And not too much of my cleavage. Well, take the, take the wins. Right, so this is where it gets really kind of fun. You can move that if you, uh, once you get this first anchoring stitch down, you'll be able to take that pin out. So now that I've come through the purple, I'm going to go back through, this is my anchoring stitch, wrap my thread around the two outside edges here. I take my needle and I go to the red side, right side of the red fabric. I'm going to push through just slightly in from the edge and push it all the way through that purple tip of fabric. That's my little anchor. It's going to keep everything together for me to get started. Now I'm going to pivot my purple fabric to my red. So now I've got the red is coming to the halfway point of the purple, right? And we're going to do our little blanket stitch. So you're going to visualize a little diagonal. So here's the point with your purple gold threads. You're going to go diagonal to the red side, push through just a little bit in from the edge, right through the purple again, and take this working thread, wrap it under your needle. If you could see the whole thing lined up, it would look a bit like an L. We've got our first stitch there. Oh, <laughs> so uh, Audra, we're just getting started and we're making a bicornu uh, pin cushion. And so uh, we are embroidering these two pieces of fabric together. So once again, I'm going to come at a, like a diagonal from that corner on the purple side across to the red push through from the right side of the red through to the right side of the purple wrap my yellow thread under that needle and pull through you can see i'm starting to have a little stitch there Any questions? I'm going to demonstrate again. A little diagonal from the corner of my L to the red, come through from the back of the red through to the front of the purple. Wrap that yellow thread under the needle and stitch three. All right. You can see I'm not going very far into the red fabric or very far into the purple fabric. I'm just joining them. They'll have like a little shallow, it will look a bit like a ladder along the edge here. If you need to go a little bit further, deeper into the fabric, that's all right. repeating my step and I'm going to make this stitch over and over all the way around actually but certainly all the way to the corner right now while you're watching
So how long am I making my basic stitch? About uh, somewhere between an eighth and a quarter inch long. Not too short, but um, not so long, it's really loose. Not so small that I'm taking a million stitches. As we come to this corner, I come through the corner, I take my stitch. This is where this fascinating little shape starts to build up. We pivot again. And you're going to start to get this like little three dimensional thing happening. It feels a little awkward, that's all right. But do make sure you take a stitch at the corner, it's very important. Pivot again, just force that fabric to be your butler, like so. Well, <laughs> I'm stitching forwards or side to side, I suppose. So let's look at this again. It's hard because uh, the image is mirrored for you. So I'm working from left to right. So I go under to the reds, up through the purple, and I take my working threads and I wrap it under the needle and I pull, well, or I get a tangle. Oh dear, big tangle, All right. Then I pull through. And we go up about, a quarter, an eighth of an inch, half a centimeter, not, yeah, half a centimeter. Um, push through from the red right side all the way to the purple, which is holding these two fabrics together with all the folded edges pointed towards the inside. Does that help clarify, Cindy? So from the right side of the reds, you see how the fabrics are sandwiched together, very flat. Push through to the right side of the purple. Wrap your thread under the needle from the purple sides. Pull through. We're moving left to right. From the stitch, forward to no stitch or to where there is not yet a stitch. So from the reds, push through the purple, wrap your thread under that needle and voila, starting to get our little square corner. Well, let's take a little breather moment, Cindy. You have plenty of time. Let me know if you need me to show the beginning again. <laughs> yes, you don't want them too close together. As Ivy says, if you make them too close, they start to look like the buttonhole stitch. So through the reds, up through the purple, I'm coming up to my next corner and I'm just going to repeat what I did previously. From the red through the purple to that corner. Right, 
So you can see it's making this little like square that's happening. All right. So good. Brittany's gotten to her first corner. Good. All right, Cindy, let me. I'm going to put this one aside, everyone, and I'm going to start you out again from the beginning with our secondary fabric that we have here. So let me prep another needle. And I'll show you how to do this if you don't have a knot at the end. <laughs> I love that. Janet says now she wants to uh, yell buttonhole stitches for the win. Yes. So we're going to use pink this time. And again, you want to divide your embroidery floss. And I just gently, slowly separate them. Usually they want to come apart. Every now and again, they'll get twisted, especially if you pull too fast like that. So just slow and steady. You add a different needle. Have my little short tail, long tail. And again, I'm going to run it through my thread heaven. Thread magic works. Absolutely love some beeswax. So good. All of those are excellent options. There are some fuddly reasons why you might choose specifically depending on the project. I'm using three strands, Alicia. You might want to use two. It all depends on your personal preference. I want this to be a little bit thicker. So I'm not knotting this end. <laughs> I'm just going to come up from the wrong side of my fashion, my print fabric just right in that corner. So they're not joined yet. I'm going to leave a little tail there. So I don't pull my thread all the way through. And now I'm going to make my stitch that's just my anchor. So I've got, I'm coming from the top, the black fabric. I come around to the back right side of the red fabric and I push my needle all the way through all layers to come out through my printed fabric on the top. That's my little anchor. So I don't have to keep it pinned. And now I'm going to pivot and put those, match those two straight edges together to make a little sandwich. And so my raw edges are folded to the underneath, to the end sides. And I've got wrong sides together and right sides out. And I have this little very thin sandwich of fabric right here. I'm going to be sewing across that edge. So we've got our anchor. I'm going to go up about half a centimeter or about an eighth of an inch to the red fabric push from the right side of the red fabric all the way through all layers to the right side of the black fabric and take my pink thread and wrap it under the needle. Push through. We have our first stitch. I'm going to repeat that, go up about an eighth of an inch or half a centimeter to the red fabric, push through from the right side of the red fabric, all the way through all layers to the right side of the black fabric. 
wrap my thread underneath. And we've made another stitch. Oh. <laughs> All right, any questions about doing this stitch? Have I clarified? Also, do not judge yourselves by my speed. I really have been uh, doing embroidery for about um, 30 years, so I'm fairly fast. Joanne, that's an exit question. Give me just a moment to get to the corner here. All right. So you can see I've got this nice little ladder going across and it's holding everything together. I've come up to my point here. Just going to, once again, you pivot and you put the flat sides together like so and continue along that edge. So let's talk about how to tie off or finish um, as you are, ah, goodness getting a new thread. So there are two answers to this question. Well, probably more than two, actually, Joanne. So first, let me take you to a good place for me to tie off. As you go, you just keep marrying your flat sides together like so. Let me show you and I will tie off. You can see how this is making a funny little kind of point as we're going along. Those are the horns. And the further you go in, you may find yourself sort of futzing about with your hands and where to hold things and where to place your thread so you don't get tangled. You know, at this point, <laughs> It's find the position that works well for your hands. Normally I would be sewing low and letting the table support my hands a bit, but I do want you to be able to see. So I'm holding things up a bit where you can see. So let's say I get in here and I'm about, I don't know, Joanne, if you're at a corner or not, but if you're sort of, in the middle of an edge. Yeah. Oops. Make a stitch, sort of complete that stitch of your ladder, and then come back through right next to the edge of that ladder, but only through the front or the top layer, the fashion fabric or what have you. It's only halfway through, you don't want to come all the way through. Just going to make a little extra stitch just to hold that ladder in place right next to you and bring your thread through to the wrong, to the insides, to the wrong sides. Now, you can make a knot there or you can leave a tail. A really high end embroiderer who's being very careful about their technique just leaves a tail and does not make an actual knot at that juncture. If you are concerned about security, however, just make a granny knot or you can do a French knot, which I will, show, I will try to show you.
So I've brought my needle. And once again, I'm working on the insides on the wrong side. I'm just picking up a few stitches, a few threads of my selvage. So I'm not going all the way through to the front. I let my needle tip come out just a little bit, like half an inch. And then I take my thread and I wrap it once, twice, thrice in a counterclockwise maneuver around that thread, that needle, and I pull my thread through. Use my fingernail to push all of that to the base, and I've made a little French knot. And then you just take your needle and you run it underneath that knot to secure it. Nothing will come undone there. So if you really want a secure knot, that will do it. I hope that answers your question, Joanne. Once you've knotted, just thread a new needle, you know, thread some fresh threads. Try and start out with a bit longer than this because you're just going to have to thread again soon. So you want again your 18, 20 inches of threads. Oh, Charity learned her French knot technique from Tea and Sympathy. I love that. That's so good. Once you've re-threaded, run it again through your wax or your thread heaven or what have you. All right, for those of you who are just getting the knack of doing your embroidery stitch, how are you feeling? How are you doing? And also for those of you who are sort of trucking along, do, once you get to that last quarter, last half of the side, do not, <laughs> do not uh, buy it, it in, do not finish, stop. Don't go forward. Let me know when you get there because we don't want to stow it all up. All right, so now I'm going to come to start fresh. I'm going to do what I did before. Come through from the wrong side of the purple fabric. Leave my little tail or my little knot sandwiched between the fabrics and then continue with my latter stitch. And I just come back through right where I left off. So my latter stitch continues uh, at the same pacing. Cindy, Brittany, how are you doing? Leticia, how are you doing? feel like you're really, the camera is uh, definitely Phil, the cameraman tonight. So very uh, cheeky. Okay, so you can see I'm starting to get this shape is starting to appear. Ah, oh, Cindy's on her third side. Excellent. Very good. Uh, that's all right, Brittany, if you have to disappear and come back to finish another time. So good. Yeah, it's a duvet for a dollhouse. That works too. I like that. All right, I'm going to put you on my face. <laughs> Oh, good. You've rounded two corners, Letitia. Excellent. Your lattes are uneven. That's fine. Um, 
yes, finishing is the same as you do with your hand sewing. Oh, good, excellent. All right, I'm going to put you back on my face. So I feel like I'm talking to you and not to my belly button. So <laughs> it's good. Um, two corners is great. Good job. If you find things are a little uneven, that's all right. It's hand sewing. It's your first one of these. You can make more. You'll see they go together pretty quickly once you get the hang of it. Mostly, she says. All right. I had a little tangle. Happens. If it turns out that your pieces are not exactly symmetrical, do not exactly meet perfectly, that's all right to make it work. This is a very low key sort of project. Sleep bag for pixies. Oh, I like that. Very good, mother. Good night, Alicia. Please do post pictures. Uh, when you are done, uh, Alicia is using a piece of embroidery from earlier. That's lovely. Oh, I'm excited to see it. All right, so the last time we made um, pin cushions, I'm getting a bit lazy there. Um, I mentioned that you could never have too many pin cushions, and that's true. And if you know a seamstress, which all of you do, tailor, dandy, hat maker, anybody who uses needles and threads, they always need pin cushions. Now I'm doing this, I'm absolutely a heretic, not using my thimble. And I really should be teaching you to do this using a thimble. But uh, now you can see that my uh, bad habit shines through. I originally learned to do embroidery without a thimble. And so if I'm not thinking about it and practicing and being careful, I'll just start stitching uh, with my embroidery needles and embroidery threads without a thimble. My fingers will be tired. They will be more sore tomorrow since I forgot to do that. So um, mm, I meant to show you how to do this with a thimble. But uh, uh, no matter, we'll get a little quirky pin cushion out of it. So. It's really easy, especially if the person who's like leading you through forgets to put hers on, then you know, it's like, there's not that moment where we all don the thimble. I suppose it's not too late. Now, you know, I'm so good about using my thimble when I'm making hats, in part because you will not get through a hat without your thimble and probably a pair of pliers. And um, oh, Deborah, who uh, I don't know if she's still here. Deborah got me this lovely, amazing little tool, which is a pusher and puller that will grab and pull your needles. This is the most magical little tool for hat making. I love it. Um, but yes, with hat making, you will not forget for long. <laughs> uh, thimbles were probably a bit of a luxury. Um, although I think for professional sewists and hat makers, 
thimbles were part of your professional kit. Probably the same with like embroiderers, professional embroiderers. Um, I have not tried a ring thimble yet, fairy godmother. I have to look. I have to look, Selena, where to get the pusher puller. Um, it's called a needle puller, Marlena. <laughs> I like that charity. Don we now our gay apparel and thimbles. Yes. Very important. All of my stitches are also not even, not perfectly. I got a little bit sloppy there, a couple of places. I had to uh, adjust my stitch length to make everything line up properly. Happens. All right, you can see this is starting to take shape. It's such a fun little shape. So you can see also, I get very fixated on my stitch length and then I forget to say words. It's easier when I can hear your voices. I miss that terribly. Yes, yes, a needle puller is the little fingertip holders, basically. Um, Janet says metal thimbles were probably expensive, but she doesn't think leather ones were. That makes sense to me, historically. And I've seen wooden thimbles too, although I wonder how they were. I've never tried one. I haven't used a ring thimble, so I don't know how to use it either. Um, I suppose I should give it a whirl so I can report back. Oh, very good mother's great grandfather carved a wooden symbol for her great grandmum, and it is now a family heirloom. I love that, or heirloom even, oh my goodness. All right, as you're coming up to the last corner, things might get a bit tight. It might feel a little bit hard to sew because you're starting to have this very cramped um, sewing space. You see it's already very three-dimensional though. So this is an excellent question. Sh uh, Cindy asks, what finger does your symbol normally go on? So now, I thought when I was a, a thimble novice, I assumed my thimble should go on my second finger. But some much more skilled thimble user, needle woman than I, taught me to put it on my middle finger. And um, so I'll, I'll try and demonstrate, although this is very hard, hard to show you. Um, right, so you use this thimble to push the back of your needle through the thread. Oh, or you can look at my keyboard, that's not very helpful at all. 
Let's see here. Yes. Yes, let's see if we can do it. Let's try that. All right, let's see. All right. So, same stitch. Come through from behind. Let's see if I can show you. Get that upper fabric. Wrap your thread around and then you're just going to push the needle with the tip of your thimble. And that's roughly how you use it. I don't think I can demonstrate the whole way. Hello, Kate. I can. Oh, there we go. He is behind me. Sort of. You can see his tail. Oh, hello. Let's try this again. Feels being a little challenging. What do you know? People wanted to see you, you silly thing. He's moved on. All right. Oh, so Ivy uses two, one on her thumb, one on her middle. They sort of make a little bit of a sandwich. And you can use them like pliers to pull your needle through. Uh, it's Monsieur Cake, David. Oh, thank you, Becky. Thank you for saying I look divine tonight. Thank you. Yes. All right, let me just finish up this side and then I hope, then I'm going to show you how to stuff. All right. And Cake may show us other things. Hello, would you like in this closet? Again, because, oh, hey, no. That's my hand. We'll see how this goes. He's helping now. All right, so I'm going to finish my penultimate side leading up to the last corner before the very last side. I'm going to leave that last side open until after you've stuffed. Yes, Kate. Oh my goodness, you don't say. Your life is so difficult. You're so neglected and unloved. Oh, you poor benighted creature. His life is very hard. Oh my goodness, Kate. He has so much sass tonight for all of us. Hi, Kate. Hello. It's a good boy. So the more you do, the more stitches you do, the more you make this sort of thing, the more even your stitches come just by practice. So don't worry too much if you find them a little uneven. If you're out of practice, you just need to stitch more. If you're new to it, that's all right. Um, Kate, are you really trying to steal my needles whilst I'm using them? For the record, yes, yes, he is really trying. So what I do is I come up to this last corner and I leave the last side open. I'm going to finish that side after I stuff my weird little shape that is coming together. Sort of like a crown, sort of like a star, all sorts of things. What I want to do is finish off just as I showed Joanne earlier. I want to finish this little bit off either with a knot or just 
leaving the thread dangle a bit. You do want to make it a bit secure there. So I did an extra anchoring stitch, just like the one I did at the beginning. Part of that is you don't want things to come undone while you're stuffing. So if your thread tension feels a little loose, if you feel like you might have things coming undone, just do a little knot on the other underside. Again, yes, you know, that's considered very dodgy in some embroidery circles, but we're, we're a bunch of rebels here, we're all right. All right, and you can snip and tuck that tail into the pocket that you now have. So you've got this little mouth. Hello, my name's Roger. I'm a pin cushion. And uh, so now we're going to stuff Roger the pin cushion. <laughs> oh, cake is making Severus come to the iPad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. It's all right if you have unravel uh, anxiety, that's all right. Oh, 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 my goodness. So Robin is sharing some wonderful details. I'm going to read this. Random thing Robin learned from her cookbooks. In Sweden during Easter, children dress as little Easter witches called Paskaringar. Oh, I don't know if my accent is very good there. And go door to door asking for sweets and coins. So Halloween on Easter. That sounds really good. I want to be an Easter witch. Maybe I will be this year. Um, Kate probably does need uh, treats. <laughs> uh, uh, um, so Leticia. I'm glad I scrolled back. Leticia says she feels really uncomfortable leaving her starting and ending threads unknotted. Um, it seems like a risk for unraveling. Yes, it is, of course. But uh, with embroidery, usually all of these stitches are very fancy uh, ways of doing, they're kind of like knots. Each stitch is sort of locked in place. And so the attitude is that if you've done a good job on your embroidery and everything's tidy and taut and your tension is right, it won't come undone ever. Um, but some people do put a little spot of glue on the underside of their embroidery to hold their threads in places. So that's that's one of the dark secrets of the embroidery worlds. They don't want you to know. I don't know who they are. There, there really is no embroidery cabal. So they're probably not likely to send their agents around to check on our embroidery threads. So you can certainly knot your thread at the end if you are concerned about it coming undone. We're here tonight. We are in favor of knots. So um i hope that answers your question a bit a bit yeah so uh thank you ivy for answering as well <laughs> yes the anarchy inherent in our group means not at will thank you charity that is exactly right um Easter witches are going to happen. <laughs> We're going to have um, wonderful Easter witch hats, dark secrets, that's us. That's what we have here, dark sewing secrets. Mm. Now, it's time to stuff um, Robert. Or did I call him Roger? I think I called him Robert. So it's time to stuff Robert. He's already got a lot of shape. Now, if you have something a little, you know, uh, stiffer in terms of fabric, so if you have done something embroidered or you're using a tapestry or a jacquard that's a little bit, you know, thicker, 
then you are going to have even more pronounced shape already. It's going to be pretty crisp. But I love this little shape. It's just a fun piece of needlework. And I'm going to use polyfill, nothing very fancy. Um, it will probably take more polyfill than you are expecting, however. And with a small thing like this, I like to get smaller pieces of polyfill so I'm not overwhelming my project. And I just stuff it in the hole with my finger. I do like to use a very, very fussy, elaborate tool called a chopstick. And I use the chopstick to help me, you know, sort of push my filler into the corners, as it were. Now, don't push so hard that you push through your stitches. You know, remember, you want, you want your stitches there. So firm, but not too hard. Easter bonnet, witch hats with a win. Sounds good. All right, he's called Roger. This is Roger the pincushion. Thank you for remembering, Robin. I'm so glad my brain has gone straight out. So I'm just going to stuff. I don't, I, let me know if you need to watch me actually stuff, Roger. Oh, oh my goodness. Fairy Godmother did actually find mini pastel cinnamon May witch hats last night. That's so good. <laughs> wow. Ooh, Marlena is halfway through cutting out her dental mock-up. Fantastic. I have to redo my mock-up, as you all know. <laughs> so that's happening. Um, but no, the next thing we will be organizing is the FIT workshop for the dental. That will be a Zoom session in which we'll all be in the Zoom with me. And we'll talk about the fit and we probably won't live stream that. It will be a private, safe place for all of us to say colourful things, to berate our markups, to pull our hair about fit and to get some answers. So, lovely. All right. So while you are stuffing this, you do want to make it fairly firm. So remember, we want our pin cushions to hold up to the pinning they're going to get. Okay. Little bits at a time. I've seen some by Cornu done where they're stacked. Um, so you get little ones sewn on top of big ones and they make these really elaborate little pyramids of quirky polyhedral experience. I don't know what this shape is called actually. I'm sure it has a mathematical name, but we call it by Cornu in the sewing world. Still stuffing, still going, but it's, it's getting there, it's getting closer. Oh my goodness, so Selena says she has to start her markup. You have plenty of time. Um, the weather has been so nice here. It has been really nice that she's been spending her free time doing yard work outside. That's lovely. Um, Cindy, if your stitches look gappy, so I have a suggestion. One, rather than taking it apart, go back and cut, you know, swap. So you worked from the red side to the purple side, let's say. Swap and work from the purple side to the red side with a thread and stitch you know, sort of like between, you know, offset. So you're stitching another stitch that goes between your existing ladder stitches. Um, so you have um, two and that will pull in those gaps and then you don't need to pull out your work. 
and you can make it a sort of decorative, stylistic, I meant to do this. Um, you can also stuff it and come back through and stitch it once it's stuffed. Some people find that easier. Um, oh, I mean, it's all right if you're not working on the same project as us. Uh, these are perfect times to sew along on your own project, absolutely. So, um, I've been thinking, and I will be discussing it with our Patreon subscribers, but I've been thinking about making a once a month just craft hangout where we sew or work on our hat making or our beading or whatever crafts and arts that we are working on that we would normally like to have a bit of company so we can talk about our aesthetic and our choices if we're wondering which color to use or if we really like that trim or maybe more beads here maybe fewer beads here there's the answer is always more beads but you know just to have that feedback in the moment and to have the company and to chit chat i think is nice so we'll be looking at times when we might do that yeah so you see my little guy roger is starting to come together you know he's a little he's still is squishy so i'm going to uh stuff him more yes precisely janet a stitching bitch that's what we're going to have monthly so and tassels oh definitely tassels there's actually some wonderful methods of making your own tassels i've never done it but i wouldn't mind learning so and i have I'm not going to lie i've been looking at some fashion plates and how people have used their tassels in the past and i've got some ideas for extra tassel action as it were so uh, once we get that pretty well stuffed in, you might want to take your, you know, handy dandy little chopstick if you have one, or a bodkin will work, or a pencil, but use the eraser end and not the pointy end. Just make sure you've got all of your little corners filled in and that it's not too lumpy anywhere this nice little you can see my stitches are not perfect but they're good enough and they're holding things so i've got still a little bit of space right near where i'm going to be stitching roger up i'm going to put another little smidge in Now, these are super um, simple, I think, once you have the idea. And uh, one of the things I like about them is you don't see a lot of this style of pincushion. And so it's fun, different pincushion to send to people if you are making gifts. Um, and uh, you can just make it while you're sitting too, which is so nice. Sometimes it's lovely to have a hand sewing project that you can just kind of whip through in the, the space of a movie. Or, you know, if you're waiting on an appointment and you uh, do better waiting for things if your hands are engaged, something like this is small enough that you can take it with you to places um, and you're not going to need, you know, your entire workshop on wheels, right? So. Ooh. Oh, Charity has mastered three kinds of tassels because she has a macrame habit from high school. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Angela's calling her bacon sandwich. I like that. A bacon sarni. Very nice. Um, see, Cindy's is calling hers. Gertrude. Gertrude is one of my favorite names. I love that name. Um, love this. So good. Excellent. Oh, 
Yeah, no, uh, one of these days we might, we've talked about doing sort of exchange quilt squares with the tea scouts. And I do have some quilt squares from people to make a full, you know, make a start on a tea scouting quilt that we might um, do as a charity or something like that. All right, once you're pretty full, pretty, pretty stuff full, you're going to have just this little opening and you're going to finish that with the same embroidery stitch. It is pretty stuff full though. So I take a little straight pin and I pin that opening mouth together just to make it a bit easier for me to stitch. So I'm not having to hold it while I stitch. And I just pin uh, parallel to the opening edge. All right. So, since we were doing with yellow, let me see if I can find my yellow thread. Where did it go? Obviously, I just put it here. Oh, there it is. My goodness. Ah. Let's try. not to lose the thread this time. Oh, Roger and Gertrude's. Hmm. They, they have a tundra from across the miles. Oh, you you have already gone beyond my ken, Ivy, with the um, the quilting. I don't know any of the patterns, so. But it would be fun. We might make it happen one of these days. The truth is, we always have scads of ideas. It's the time and the place and the you know the manpower as it were to make it happen now remember we're all rebels here so not or don't not as your preference maybe we will not judge you whether you not or not it's hard to make that sound reasonable in any way shape or form So I'm going to make a little anchoring stitch for myself right at that corner. I'm just going to pick up where I left off. Same stitches going in the same direction. It's all right if you have a little wobble there as you're getting started. Usually once I've got a stitch or two in place again, I don't need that straight needle anymore, the straight pin to hold things. I just need it when I'm getting back into the side. Um, and then I pull it out because it, I don't like being stabbed. If it's not stabbing you though, leave it in as long as you like. This is the trickiest side because everything's very full now. Oh, 
oh good selena did a google search of that quilt pattern she said it's really cute excellent i suspect what needs to happen with the tea scout quilts is to have a person who really likes logistics and quilting to sort of take charge so when you come to your last corner, the very end, the place where you started, you've got your little thread hanging. We're going to have to finish it off, aren't we? So come back to the under, you know, the red side, push through to the front. You want to make another little anchor stitch for yourself. And I'm of two minds. One, you could just bury the tail or if you really want to make sure it's secure, this is a nice place to put a little French knot. You might also say to yourself, you know, it'd be really cute is putting a little bead or a tassel at each of those corners. You would be right. You can definitely decorate your corners. But we're doing just a simple one here. So any further decoration is certainly at your whim. I'm just going to do a little French knot at the end here, if my thread will stop coming off my needle. All right. And then I push my needle away from my French knot all the way through the stitches. And then I come back up from under the stitches, sort of halfway down the sides. And I'm just going to cut that thread very close to where it comes up whilst making sure not to stitch or not to snip through any of my embroidery stitches. Now, technically you're done. If you don't want to do anything else to this, it's done, it's ready to go. It is a pin cushion, but I like to put a little sandwich there with a button. So that's our next step is the buttons. Oh my goodness. Well, we've got some really strong ideas about the quilt. So uh, we will talk about that in more seriousness outside of the comments so we can have everything sorted. Of course, like all seamstresses and tailors and people who sew, I have a stash of buttons. And I knew I'd have something that would work in here. Question is what I will use. These cute little silver flowers. This might be nice. Um, some black buttons. Black's always a good option. Use little gold tone buttons, maybe. I may to let you help me pick. Just pulling out some options. Now, some of you asked me shank or no shank? Shank's a little trickier to attach, but there's no reason why you can. Um, no shank is probably a little easier, but there's no reason why you have to do a shank. Hmm. Well, I think those are probably good options. Probably. All right, let's see what you think. Be ready, help me choose. 
All right. Oh my goodness. Oh, Selena, that'd be lovely. Well, this is this is a bigger project. It would be a bigger charity effort. So we'd probably want to think about which charity we wish to raise funds for. And um and uh, a timeline. So one option is to do this lovely little silver button. It's shaped like a sunflower. And I just drew it someplace. That was not helpful. Um, another option is to do a little gold tone button. You can't see that really. Little cute button. Or, of course, a black, just a little black swirl. So, what do you think? Black, silver, or gold tone? With my purple and red. Marlena says quilts tend to get better dollars when done as a raffle versus an auction. We might do a raffle, yeah. Gold tone, all right, Charity. Gold, two for gold, three for gold, all right. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, let me just set these aside. All right, so using your very long embroidery needle, and your floss is fine, although you can use regular thread at this point. But if you have floss left over, I recommend just using what you have. Thread your needle again, if you can see the, oh my goodness, my eyes are getting tired. Janet, that's a perfect way to uh, to do. I like to lay the buttons on my fabric and see how they look. I am finding that the light is such that I don't think you can see very well what I'm doing and choosing. So I am putting a little knot in this thread. You want to find roughly the center points of your pin cushion, and you're going to stab your needle from the center all the way through to the back center. That's why you want a nice long needle. So it can get all the way through and you won't lose your needle in the center of your in cushion. Make a bigger knot than I just did. Let's try that again. myself a little anchor stitch this time. Bigger knot so it won't pull through. And we're going to go all the way through to the center back and pull through and give it, you know, you want to make a little indentation there. So pull through hard but not so hard that you break your thread. And then 
make a tiny stitch here on the back and come back to the top roughly out where you started. So you want to marry up your stitches. And then you pull it through. All right, and you can see how I'm pulling to make a little indentation there. It also makes a little indentation here. If you need to, you can repeat that. Just to make sure you've got good indentation. This is purely aesthetic. Oh my goodness. Fiona is letting you all know how miserable she is. So and then push back through to the same exact spot on the back sides. Give it another pull. And repeat to the front. It's hard to see. Yeah, just bringing in the indents. Yeah. No buttons yet. Yes, Fiona is singing the song of her people. All right, so we've made our indents. I've made mine pretty good. And now that I've got my indent sort of going, I'm going to add my button. I'm just leaving this thread here. So with a shank button, of course, you're going to have to finagle a little bit with the threads. But it will sit really nicely in that indentation when I'm done. Fortunately, this isn't like making garments where you're worried about your button snagging off. I repeat the process going all the way through to the back sides, that back side indents. I just do it maybe three times, twice, just enough to know that my button is secure. But again, we're not doing any sorts of coat or bodice here where these buttons are going to get used all the time. So. Just enough. And then we're going to repeat that for the undersides if you want it to look the same on both sides and to be, you know, Bob's your uncle, you choose which side you like. If you don't care whether or not it looks the same on both sides, if you have a definite bottom and top, you don't need to put both buttons. You can just do the one on the top. Thank you, June. I think it turned out pretty nice. I'm happy with it. Ooh, lovely. So Ivy says she likes the Victorian crazy quilting. She uses beads and old jewelry and lots of embroidery stitches to do her quilts. I love that. That's really nice. Beautiful. All right. So then if you want to repeat, you put your button here and you repeat the steps that I just did. Pull your thread through, knot it and snip it when you're done. If you do not wish to have a button on both sides, you can just make a little trench knot here and then snip off your excess thread. Any questions? We're basically done. We've basically made a little cushion. Yes, hand wash only. 
with the quilts, I'm assuming, the crazy quilts. Right, let me just... Oh my goodness, we have all sorts of discussion of uh, quilts. Lovely, lovely. All right, so that's it. That is our pin cushion project for the new year. This is a bicornu, a bicornu, if you speak French. And um, I hope you enjoyed making it. And I hope you enjoyed learning a little embroidery tonight. <laughs> yes, yes, you could be Roger's godmother. Absolutely fairy godmother. Roger needs a godmother. So there we go. My latest pin cushion. This is obviously going to have to go to some good home um, where it will be loved. You can see there's Roger, the um, Day of the Dead puppet on the front. So um, I did not pay any, never mind, to how my patterns were lined up when I was cutting my scraps. But if you want to be really clever, you can obviously do some artful things with your patterns as well so yes that was it that was it and we uh the nice thing about these is they are very quick projects so that we can sort of one and done and uh, hopefully pick up a few more skills as well cindy i'm so glad that you enjoyed i love making these and i realized when i suggested it on the patreon I had not made uh, Bikonu in a long time and um, felt like it was past time that uh, I needed to not only make one but share the joy of making them. And um, I just think they're really fun, you know, they have a different look. You can do a lot of fun things with them. And if you do a embroidery as a hobby, I think you can imagine all of the ways that you could do very elaborate embroideries to make this even fancier. So yes, that is our ah, tutorial for this week. Thank you, Ivy. Thank you everyone for being here and thank you for your patience as I am still feeling a bit under the weather uh, compared to normal. So we will be with you on Friday for Friday tea, definitely. Um, there might not be a Saturday tea yet as the Grand Arbiter is still waiting for Legos, but we'll both be there Friday and um, we will be talking about some new fun projects uh, via the Patreon as well. Oh, thank, thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Janet. Leticia, I'm so glad you had such fun. Thank you, Audra and Martha. I'm so glad you are all here. Thank you, June. I'm feeling better than I did on Sunday. So that's the good news. And it's not COVID. So it's a, a, a I uh, pulled a muscle. So anyway, it's all right. Um, thank you, Charity. So happy to help with sanity measures as we may. All right, thank you. Yes, great. It, they would make really wonderful like tuffets and door houses, absolutely. Um, you can, we did a five by five or a six by six, just because it's easy size to get done in an hour and a half. But really you could do any kind of size from the small to the very, very large. These would make wonderful throw pillows or floor cushions if you wanted to make a really large one. You would probably be advised to sew that with a machine at that point but you could make a huge tuffet for a human being to sit on with one of these. Yes, bigger and greater for couches and beds. Um, yeah, make a couple of huge ones for your uh, couch. They're squares, squares of fabric sewn together. That's all they are. It's just a fun way of sewing two squares together. And I um, love the way it all comes together. Thank you, Robin. I know I am very happy to help keep you sane and also thank you for all that you have done over the last 10 months with all of the recipes and you know the cooking magic you've shared it's been lovely so um 
I don't have any New Year wisdom to share tonight, but I am just so grateful and delighted that we've had the last 10 years, 10 years, oh my goodness, 10 months, feels like 10 years, we've had the last 10 months of wonderful sewing and community together. And I'm excited for what we get up to in the new year. Lots of projects on the horizon. Um, it is the sort of Miss Muffet's Tuffet, definitely. So, my darlings, I wish you all a wonderful, good rest of your Tuesday. For those of you on the East Coast, sweet dreams when you get there. And as always, stay home, wear a mask, wash your hands, take very good care of yourselves. The numbers are going up everywhere. We are going to have some most holiday spikes and you know there's always concerns about those spikes so please be even more cautious than you have been because you are irreplaceable each of you you are magic you are treasures i adore you um oh my gosh feel the tap it with it to ward off the evil spiders yes you could make little potpourri sachets out of these two so go forth, make art, do good deeds in the world. But the most important deed is to take care of yourselves. We will see you Friday for tea. And who knows what after that. So good night, my darlings. Thank you so much for keeping me company tonight. Or you keep you will keep keeping me company until I figure out how to stop. So good night. <laughs>